I'm here with Cheryl Boglioli, and she has a great idea for keeping your artful supplies looking artful. So she's brought some travel bags with her. So the first one that we have here, right, tell us about it, Cheryl. This is a little tote bag, canvas bag, that carries like my pens, pencils, different things that I want to be artsy with. And it just came as a plain canvas bag. Yes. And you went to town I with did. your stencils. I did some stencils. I did some gelatin printing on here. I doodled on it. And I'm still, it's actually still a work in progress. That's cool because so. it evolves as you travel. Yes. But the thing that you told me that I'm super excited about is you said you don't actually need to buy a purchase bag. You can make an artful bag for your supplies. You can. So I have here one that I made. And here it's all just decorated with various different paints. But this is what I carry my art brushes in. And is that one evolving too? I think this one's good. This, okay. I, but you never know because <laughs> I may want to add some more decor on the back side of it. So these are the art brushes that I want to carry with me every time that I'm traveling. Okay, so these are your essentials. Will you tell us a little yes. bit about why these are your essentials? Yes, absolutely. So I always carry a palette knife with me because you know I'm very much into texture and I've always got some stash somewhere, but it's also great for just helping smear paint and stuff. So I always try to carry a palette knife with me. Then I carry some flats. These are called flat brushes because you can tell that um, the end of them is more of a squared shape. So these are flat brushes. So I have a large one that I do to do like a wash across a whole page or a background, and then a little bit smaller one. Then I use a filbert, which has got a slightly rounded edge to it. So this is great for shading. And then I have a variety of rounds here. So I have two rounds. So if I want to do something circular, if I want to do some little dots. Lastly, I have a liner. So this is what I sign my work, because that is an artist, you should always sign your work. And then I have a watercolor brush that I can use with any watercolor markers that I have or watercolor crayons or even a water soluble pencil. And then lastly, I have some permanent ink pens as well. One okay. in a brush and one in a fine. So just people can so people can see some of the differences. I just want to put these over here so we can kind of see the difference here of what's happening. So if you look at these brushes really quickly, the difference again between the flat and the filbert is the curve in the filbert. Yes. And the difference between the round brush and the liner brush is the length of the bristles. Yes. Isn't that correct? Okay. Yes. And now you're going to just show us really quickly how the different paint, how the different brushes make the same paint look. Exactly. So we'll just pull our water over here a little bit closer. So we can just use a little bit, um, put some paint out here. And then if you're using a wash, a lot of times I'll even dilute that. So if I want something washed, I'll already have water on my paper and then be able to get a little bit of a paint. And here I can quickly. So big brush, really quick, a big flat brush. That's right. what it does for yeah. you. It gives yeah. you that nice wash. Yes, it does. OK. All right. So then we have a filbert. So the filbert's used more for shading or you know, sketching out a design or something. But because I can use that this. curved edge gives you a little bit more control than when you're working, let's with say, that with that big, big flat. flat brush. Right, right, okay. right. And I can see also that you're working with it without a lot of water. So yes. it's a very dry brush. You can. So um, that's okay. more of a filbert. And then lastly, you have your uh, round brush, which is great for if you want to draw lines with it or if you want to come back in and put some little, little dots. dots. Yes, because you never know. And then, again, lastly, now when I'm signing my name, I pick out which color I'm going to do and I make more of an ink. And then I'm able to just sign my name with this. With that nice liner brush. Yes. Very cool. OK, so now let's go through the process for, of actually making it. And I can dry those brushes for you. I can Great. be your assistant. OK, so we've got our brushes here. So the first thing that I did was I just laid everything out that I was going to be using mm -hmm. on my, so no rulers needed. Easy just to stick it in here. No measuring. We love that, right? Mm-hmm. All righty. So once it's lined up how you want it, and I know I still have some of your brushes, That's obviously. That's okay. That's not a problem. We'll just show you a couple right here. Mm -hmm. So then I lay my items on here, and I just take my brush marker, and I'm just tracing them. So you're just tracing it kind of the way that people do on pegboard. And again, you're just using a simple piece of acrylic felt. It doesn't have to be anything special. Could it be a different kind of surface? Could you use canvas? Could you use, you fab, could use regular canvas. fabric? Yes, absolutely. 
But I do would suspect it has to be something a little heavier, like felt or canvas, as opposed to just a regular piece of like printed yes, cotton. Yes, if you used a regular fabric, you would have to find some way to stabilize it and actually give it some strength. Okay. So anyway, I think you have one over there that I've already all sketched I out. I do, and I was going to say, you know what, Cheryl? It looks a little bit to me <laughs> that you did a tiny bit more than just trace, because I see little. that you added some fun details, particularly here with the water brush. If I pull the water brush in, I can see that you actually sort of added a lot of the bits that you see here. Is this purely decorative? It is purely okay. decorative just to add some artsy flair because now it's, it's still just kind of cute like this too, right? So I've already sketched it all out. I think it would be cool to do this on both sides and then you actually have what's in it on the outside that would too, be. which would be that super neat. That is a great neat. idea. So maybe there is some more that I can add to that one. So once that's done, now the easy thing is we just need to go in and make some little snip marks in it. Why? So, because we want to give somewhere for our brushes oh, to be able to slide right of into course. it. <laughs> so there's no little pockets in here, so mm -hmm. we need to create some little ones. Now, you need to think about this just a tiny bit. So like the palette knife, for mm -hmm. example, is a real wide base and a real wide here. So you want to snip on this one, I've learned, and some of it is trial and error, and give two little snips, because you want to create a little brace and go a little bit bigger than the lines that you created for this one here, well, especially interesting. here. I would always think that you would go smaller than the lines you drew, but you're saying go bigger. Just for this one, because it's thicker. Ah. So on this one, and maybe the watercolor brush, because they're thicker in diameter, okay. so you have to kind of take some of that into effect. Where the smaller brushes like these, mm -hmm. we don't need to. So these small brushes. And, and you know what I just realized the great thing about using felt is? It doesn't ravel. Exactly. So when you make these cuts, unlike a regular fabric or something, it doesn't matter. No, these are not, I'm not worried about them fraying or anything like that. So again, I'm just gonna snip, make two little snips. And again, don't, you can't make one because then it's gonna stick out the back. So you have to make a little pocket here for it. And just give some little snips. And then your little brushes will just fit right in And you here. know what I like so much is that you know, not only do you know where everything goes, but when you're cleaning up, because I leave things behind, <laughs> trust me, do you know what I mean? Right. And this is a great way to know whether or not you've left something behind. And if we look back right here at your finished one where everything is laid out, and obviously you can load it up, I notice, of course, that you've painted it, but you could also leave it plain or okay. whatever else you'd like. This is a great idea for keeping your artful supplies. I, I also want to point out, of course, that you added the ribbon yes. to add the closure, Just sew right? a little one on there, just sew a little ribbon, sew a little button and that way you can tie it in a knot and you're all ready to go.